When we walk through a forest, we notice that tall, living trees are once glowing in sunlight, their leaves shimmering in the breeze. But we rarely stop to notice the others, the ones standing quietly in the shadows, their back cracked, their branches bare, their trunks hollowed by time, a dying tree, or what some might call the end of a life. But in the forest, no thing truly ends. When a tree dies, it begins a different journey, one that is just as important, does that meaningful as the years it spent growing toward the sky. Trees rarely die suddenly. The final chapter often unfolds slowly, over years or even decades. Sometimes a drought weakens the tree. Sometimes insects invade its bark. Sometimes a lightning strike splits its trunk, and sometimes it simply grows old. As life begins to fade, the tree redirects its remaining energy toward its roots, and its branches gradually stop producing leaves. But even in these final days, it continues giving, sending nutrients into the soil through its roots, sharing carbon with neighboring trees through the underground fungal network. The tree may be dying, but already it has begun preparing the forest for new life. There comes a moment when the trunk can no longer hold it. Losing the wood softens, and with a slow sigh, sometimes quiet, sometimes thunderous, the tree falls. To human eyes, this falls looks like destruction, but to the forest, it is simply transformation. The fallen trunk becomes a nest lock, a cradle for seedlings, moths, lichens, and fungi. Rainwater collects in its roots, mushrooms bloom along its bark. Tiny insects explore its cracks and tunnels. A single fallen tree can host more forms of life than an entire living garden. Like death is actually the beginning of a new world. As years pass, the tree slowly returns to its earth. Fungi begin the work, sending filaments deep into the wood, breaking down tough fibers that no animal could digest. Next come the insects, beetles, termites, ants, and countless tiny creatures that carve their homes inside the trunk, turning wood into soil. Then the moss arrives. A soft green carpet growing over the bark. It holds moisture. Invites more life and protects the wood beneath. Birds perch. On the trunk, squirrels have food in its hollows. A fox may sleep in its shade. A frog may nestle in its damp, cool cracks. Bit by bit, season by season, the tree's body dissolves back into the forest floor. Nothing is wasted. Everything is returned. 
Some trees don't fall right away. They remain standing, tall, silent, doors, and less nuts. A snap may be blackbirds, but it is one of the most important homes in the forest. Woodpeckers have their nests inside it. Owls raise their young in the hollows. Bats rest in its cracks. Insects shelter in the decaying wood. A dead tree standing may support more life than it ever did while alive. It becomes a tower of nourishment, a sanctuary, a lighthouse for animals seeking shelter in the shadows of the forest. In a way, the forest remembers the life of every tree. When a last tree dies, sunlight reaches the ground for the first time in decades. Since that waited and darkness suddenly awakened. Young saplings compete, stretching toward the empty space in the canopy, a space the fallen trees has made for them. Its nutrients flow into the roots, its decay fits their growth, its absence becomes their opportunity. Life rises from the remains of the past. So what really happens when a tree dies? It becomes food, it becomes shelter, it becomes a soil, it becomes a doorway for a new life to enter the forest, and perhaps a dying tree can teach us something. It teaches us the endings that are not failures, they are transformations. That giving is another form of living that every life, no matter how long or short, lives behind something that others can grow from. A tree does not fear death, it simply returns to the earth that once lifted it toward the sky. A tree's last gift is the beginning of something new in the forest. Now, it truly ends.